Problems like this have practically become a meme at this point, and since we understand the meme framework, every time a clip like this gets traction on the internet, us mathy people groan. Has everyone still not studied the classic results of Leonard Euler? Well, long story short, this is impossible. I'll explain why briefly, but since I assume a lot of my audience already knows why, we're going to look at a deeper question as well. First though, the explanation. There are five points of intersection in this figure, and the challenge is to start at any point and travel along the figure so that you've traced all the line segments without lifting your pencil. Once you try it with the water droplets, you may attempt it without the water droplets, but it turns out it makes no difference. Anyways, if you've never encountered a problem like this in the context of mathematics, you may be unsure how one could even prove this is impossible without actually actually checking every single way we could trace the figure. But the problem turns out to be pretty simple when we just focus on the structure. Right now, I'm labeling each point of intersection with the number of line segments that touch it. This is called the degree of the point. We see, for example, at this point, there are one, two, three line segments. So we've written three, that's the degree. Over here, there are only two line segments touching this point, so its degree is two. Now, we've already spoiled the fact that the challenge is impossible on this figure, but imagine a figure where the challenge is possible. Here's such an example. Let's think about how many segments must be touching each point for this to be possible. Certainly, most of the points must be touching an even number of segments, a multiple of two, because when we traverse a segment to arrive at a point, we then need to traverse another segment to leave the point. That accounts for two segments touching the point. So that means the segments need to come in pairs, so each time we visit a point, we can also leave it to continue the tracing. There are, of course, two exceptions to this rule. The the starting point and the ending point. The real word for what we've been calling a point is vertex. Because we get to leave the starting vertex without actually tracing a segment to get there because we started there. So the starting vertex can have an odd degree, touching an odd number of segments. Like here, it's touching just the one segment. Now, in a different figure, if there happened to be another edge that actually takes us back to the starting vertex, that would be fine. There would just need to be another edge to let us leave it to continue the trace. Still, it would have an odd degree because it has that starting segment and then pairs of additional segments if we happen to revisit it. Of course, things are similar for the ending vertex, because we get to trace a segment to arrive there without needing an additional segment to leave, because once we get to the ending vertex, of course, we just stop. So the ending vertex can also have an odd degree, but all of the other ones need to have an even degree. So then it seems for this tracing challenge to be possible on a figure, the figure must have exactly two points of odd degree, one to be the starting point and one to be the ending point, where every other vertex has an even degree, so every time you arrive to it, you can also leave. However, there is one other option that will work, which is if the figure has vertices all of even degree. So this is the figure we just looked at. It has two vertices with an odd degree, but we could make it so zero vertices have an odd degree if we joined that starting and ending point. In a case like this, it it is possible to trace the entire graph without lifting our pen, however, we will start and stop at the same vertex, completing a circuit of sorts. So all this logic is pretty straightforward and it makes it easy to see why this puzzle in the original video is impossible. How many odd degree points does it have? Well, not zero and not two. We labeled them and we can count them. It has one, two, three, 
four odd degree points. So yes, indeed, we don't have to check every conceivable option. It's definitely impossible to complete this tracing challenge on this figure. And here's an amusing Reddit post I saw the other day where a town is actually trying to torture its innocent citizens. The challenge here is the same as what we've been discussing, and on one of these figures, it's not possible. And now you have enough information to figure out which figure it is. All right, enough with the baby talk. These points of intersection, like we said, are not points. They are called vertices. And these segments that join pairs of points are not called segments. They they are called edges. And these drawings or figures of vertices that are joined by edges are not called figures, they are called graphs. And the tracing challenge we've been discussing is not some cute internet challenge, it is the question of when a graph has an Eulerian trail. These, of course, are named after legendary mathematician Leonard Euler, who in 1736 solved a related problem on a graph that looked like this. Now, Leonard Euler, in fact, was man, not pigeon, but if you like combinatorics, you can get my pigeonhole principle pins, or the pigeonhole principle t-shirt exclusively at mathshin.com, my math fashion store. Or another fun option is the Seven Bridges of Konigsberg t-shirt. This features Leonard Euler walking towards the city of Konigsberg. And in the design, you can see all seven bridges, which is exactly where this graph comes from. So check it out if you're interested, mathshin.com, link in the description and the pinned comment. The problem Euler solved concerned what are called Euler Eulerian circuits. These are just a special type of the Eulerian trails that we've been discussing. An Eulerian circuit, we saw one earlier, starts and stops at the same vertex. And like we mentioned before, in an Eulerian circuit, no vertices can have an odd degree. They all have to have an even degree. Euler showed that this even degree condition was necessary for an Eulerian circuit to exist but there was no proof that this condition was also sufficient until Karl Hierholzer gave one in 1873. Though it's important to note that all the vertices having an even degree only imply that the graph will have an Eulerian circuit if the graph is connected. And for the purpose of this video, we're really only talking about connected graphs. A graph like this is connected, but a graph like this is not connected. So Euler showed the necessity, over a hundred years later, Karl Hierholzer showed the sufficiency, and this actual graph, which like I said, modeled the city of Konigsberg and its seven bridges, didn't actually appear in print for another two decades. Graph theory wasn't really a thing in Euler's time, so this whole ordeal was quite slow moving. Okay, we've established that for a graph to have an Eulerian trail, it must have exactly two or zero odd degree vertices. It must also be connected, but like we said, we're gonna assume all of our graphs are connected for this video. If a graph has two odd degree vertices, those will be the starting and ending vertices of an Eulerian trail, and we call such a trail open because it doesn't come back to its starting point. It doesn't close itself. On the other hand, if a graph has zero odd degree vertices, then in fact it's an Eulerian trail that is closed, which is called an Eulerian circuit. It comes back to its starting point and closes, so to speak. Furthermore, this condition is both necessary for a graph to have an Eulerian trail and sufficient, so we know exactly which graphs don't have Eulerian trails. For a graph like this that doesn't have an Eulerian trail, it's not possible to trace the entire graph in one stroke of our pen. We know it's not possible for this graph since, like we noted before, it has four odd vertices, not the necessary zero or two. So although it's not possible to trace the entire graph with one stroke of our pen, it is possible to do so with two strokes. As you can see here, I've now traced the entire graph by using just two strokes, a red one and a blue one. In that sense, finding an Eulerian trail for this graph is impossible, but only just barely. One trail isn't enough, but two trails will do. So then we might ask, in general, 
how many trails are needed to decompose a graph. That's the jargon we would use. We could say here that the graph has been decomposed into this red trail and this second blue trail. And well, it's easy to imagine what the answer might be. We know that if a graph has two or zero odd degree vertices, it can be decomposed into a single Eulerian trail or Eulerian circuit. So think two odd degree vertices means one trail. We just saw an example where four odd degree vertices required two trails. So then we might guess that if a graph has 2k odd vertices, then it can be decomposed into k trails, where k is greater than zero. Of course, in the case where k equals zero, that's when we get an Eulerian circuit. There are no odd vertices. So we're thinking if a graph has two odd vertices, it can be decomposed into one trail. If it has four odd vertices, it can be decomposed into two trails. If it has six odd vertices, it can be decomposed into three trails, and so on. If you're observant, you might be saying, hey, that only addresses graphs with an even number of odd vertices. What if a graph has an odd number of odd vertices? Well, one of the first things you learn in graph theory is that's not possible, so we don't have to worry. A graph can only ever have an even number of odd vertices. All right, so here's statement of our claim, and we're going to prove this bad Larry. For a connected, non-trivial graph, that means it has at least two vertices, which also means it has an edge since it has to be connected, with exactly 2k odd vertices, the minimum number of trails that decomposes it is the maximum of k and one. So again, non-trivial means it has at least two vertices, which forces it to have an edge because it's connected. We're looking at the minimum number of trails because of course we could take any graph like this one and just take every single edge as a trail of the graph and thus decompose it into a bunch of trails. That's not really interesting. We're trying to figure out the most efficient way to decompose it into the minimum number of trails possible. And then finally, the crux of the result is with this K here. The only reason one is here is for the situation where K equals zero, and we know that the graph has a single Eulerian circuit. Once K equals one and we have two odd vertices, then the maximum is one and we know a single Eulerian trail will do. And then for larger values of K, we're going to need K trails. So when K equals zero, how many trails do we need? Well, turns out it's one in that special case, but for every other value of K that's bigger, K is the number of trails we need. Now to prove this result, we're going to need to show that our claimed number of trails is both necessary and sufficient. Let's start off with the sufficiency part. Here is a pretty simple observation. A partition of a graph G's edges into trails necessarily has an open trail ending at each odd vertex. Now, what does this mean? Well, when we say a partition of a graph G's edges into trails, just read that as we've decomposed the graph into trails. And when we do that, the odd vertices will have to be places where the open trails in the decomposition end. Like we discussed, for an even degree vertex, each time a trail arrives at the vertex, it will also leave. So the degree will come in pairs of edges. Hence, a vertex which is not the ending of an open trail is going to have an even degree. For a vertex to have an odd degree, it will have to be at the ending, either end, of an open trail. That way, only a single edge is contributed to the vertex's degree instead of a pair of edges. Of course, each open trail has exactly two end vertices. So since every odd vertex must occur at the ending of a trail, and every trail has two endings, to get 2k odd vertices, we're going to need at least k trails. And this establishes the necessity of our claim that we will need k trails to decompose the graph. Now, to show that our claim number of trails is sufficient, I'm going to use a demonstration. It's simple logic and a demonstration will make it most clear. Now, in the case where k equals zero and there are no odd vertices, then we know that the graph decomposes into a single Eulerian 
Hyperion circuit, and we're going to just take that result as given, thanks to Mr. Heerholzer in 1873. So let's just assume then that k is greater than zero, and so our graph with 2k odd vertices has at least two odd vertices. And we need to show that k trails will be sufficient to decompose our graph with 2k odd vertices. Here's a graph on which we will demonstrate the procedure. I'll go ahead and highlight the odd vertices. In this graph, you can see that there are in fact six odd vertices. So in this case, k is equal to three. So we want to show that this can be decomposed into three trails. And to do that, we're going to use this graph to construct a different graph that has an Eulerian circuit. Now here's the part where the even number of odd vertices is important. We're going to pair up our odd vertices. It doesn't matter how you do it, just take two odd vertices and put them in a pair. Let's say these two odd vertices are paired up. We'll say these two are paired up and we'll pair up these two odd vertices. Now to create our new graph, we're going to add an edge joining the vertices in each pair. Of course, the two vertices in the red pair already have an edge joining them, but that's no problem. We can just go ahead and add another one. Same thing for the blue pair. And these two vertices do not have an edge joining them, but we're going to go ahead and add one. Of course, in the notation of our result, since there are 2k odd vertices and we paired them up and added an edge for each pair, we've added k edges. Specifically, we've added an edge to each pair of odd degree vertices, which means now all of the vertices have an even degree because we bumped all of those odd degrees up by one, like this vertex here. It did have degree three, but now it has degree one, two, three, four. That means this graph now has an Eulerian circuit, and we can use the Eulerian circuit as instructions for decomposing the original graph into the desired three trails. Here what I'm doing is drawing an Eulerian circuit of this new graph, but each time the circuit traverses one of those extra edges we added, I'm using green instead of black. Then, to take this circuit and turn it into a decomposition of this graph into the required three trails, all we do is follow this circuit, but each time we encounter one of those extra edges, we take that as instruction to begin a new trail. So I would start my first trail, just like this, and then we see that a new edge is encountered, so I would switch to a different color just to represent that I'm starting a new trail. Following along in the circuit, the next trail goes up here, and then down here, and then over, and then down, and then back up, and then it encounters one of those extra green edges, so that would be the end of that trail. I take that as instruction to start my next and final trail, which just goes up this last remaining edge. Of course, in the Eulerian circuit, it finishes with one of those extra edges. That's my instruction to stop. I've finished decomposing the graph into three trails, as you can see indicated by the three distinct colors. And this cute method can be followed to take a graph with 2k odd vertices and decompose it into k trails, establishing the sufficiency of our claim. So there we go. We know why this challenge is impossible. And now, given any graph, you know just how impossible it is. If you can't trace it out in a single stroke, you can count its number of odd vertices and cut that number in half to figure out exactly how many strokes it will take except when it has zero odd vertices, in which case it will take just one stroke. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Again, be sure to check out mathshin.com for the coolest math clothes and match merch in the world, and subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling art to keep the cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so.